You're listening to the podcast of ASN Kidney News, the news magazine of the nephrology community. Kidney News is a publication of the American Society of Nephrology, the world's largest professional society dedicated to leading the fight against kidney disease. In this episode, Kidney News Editor-in-Chief Pascal Lane interviews outgoing ASN President Thomas M. Kaufman, M.D., and incoming President Sharon Anderson, M.D., about the leadership and direction of the society. This is Pascal Lane, editor of Kidney News, and today I'm talking with Thomas Kaufman, who is currently serving as president of the American Society of Nephrology. He's also the James R. Clapp Professor and Chief of the Division of Nephrology, as well as Senior Vice Chair for Academic Affairs in the Department of Internal Medicine at Duke. So how long have you been participating in ASN activities? Well, Pascal, it's been a number of years. I actually started when I was a fellow and have submitting abstracts and work my way up the up the food chain to abstract reviewer and participating in sessions and then got involved in various committees. I was the program chair for the meeting in 1999 and served on the various advisory groups, including the transplant advisory group, and then started on council uh, 2003. So what's new during your term as ASN president? Many new things. In fact, so many new things, I know I'm not going to mention them all, but I just to hit some of the highlights, I, I think one of the important things that's happened really over the last two years since uh, Todd Abraham started as our new executive director is that we've really beefed up the staff to an appropriate size for the organization and the number of activities uh, that go on inside the society. Some of the important new hires uh, that have happened over the past year is Adrian Lee was hired as the as the new director of communications, overseeing the publications operations, among other things. And, and uh, Philip Kochmuller as the new chief learning officer, who's provided new oversight and organization to our, our wide range of, of educational programs. As you know, in the past year, that we, we saw the uh, appearance of uh, ASN Kidney News, which has been spectacular in its, its first series of issues. We recently had a transition of uh, the clinical journal of, of the ASN C. Jason to monthly publication and have started things like podcasts, which uh, we're doing now, and uh, which have turned out to be very popular among our members and, and with thousands of hits already in, in a relatively short time that we've been offering them. We've added new educational directors, John Burkhart and Mark Pohl, uh, to run the, the ASN board review course, which was just completed with record attendance and uh, rave reviews. And have offered new online offerings for our geriatric nephrology curriculum and audio versions of NEFSAP. So I'll take a deep breath, but I think that that's a, a summary of some of the high points that have happened over the past year that I'm particularly uh, proud of and think have really added to what the society does and, and will be able to do going forward. So what's new in the policy arena? Uh, also, many things. We've been very busy in that area, and I just want to acknowledge uh, Jonathan Himmelfarb, who has, has been the chair of our policy board for the last five years, just now stepping down. He's done a fabulous job really putting the ASN on the map in the policy arena, and uh, things that have been on the radar screen in the past you know, eight to ten months. Number one is, is our efforts to help shape implementation of the of MIPA Act as, as it relates in particular to care of patients with kidney disease and many issues in that area, but including the, the bundling reimbursement issues, and, and we've been very much involved in helping shape how, how that rolls out. We've also been involved in conversations about the medical homes, which is a, a a concept that may well affect the way medical care looks in this country in, over the next year. And we're particularly concerned about how that might affect nephrology practice. Uh, so we've spent a lot of time in trying to, to craft a position and, and help guide that discussion in a way that we think will be beneficial to the practice of nephrology going forward. We're, as always, and this has been sort of a, a major policy effort for ASN for a number of years, is to lobby on Capitol Hill for improved uh, funding of research uh, at NIH and to particularly try and support ongoing and expanding funding for, for kidney disease research. Another area that, uh, that we've worked on that is, is very timely and important is we developed a corporate relations task force to, to help develop a set of principles around the issue of conflict of interest, and, and which has been in the press a lot lately, to help the society sail through the choppy waters of conflict of interest in a way that we can continue to provide outstanding portfolio of educational programs uh, while maintaining transparent and productive relationships with, with our corporate sponsors and supporters. And there will be very soon a, a 
white paper coming out and Jason describing some of those deliberations in, in the ASM position and conflict of interest. Renal Week's almost upon us. Is there anything you'd like to highlight about this year's? Do we have an hour? <laughs> there are a lot of things to highlight. So, so I, I've got to say I'm very excited uh, about the program and this year's program chair, Ray Harris, assembled an outstanding program committee and developed a superb program for Renal Week this year that compares very favorably with, with the outstanding programs that have gone forward. And I know the, the outstanding program that Sharon will develop over the next year. We've got great plenary speakers, so, so the, or one of the recipients of the Nobel Prize in Medicine last year, Roger Chen, will be given the plenary uh, talk uh, the first day uh, of the meeting. We also have outstanding plenary lectures related to uh, genetics of complex diseases and podocyte biology that sort of set the stage, I think, for outstanding clinical and basic science symposia that follow through the course of the meeting. As every year, the Postgraduate Education Committee has, has developed a superb series of clinical nephrology conferences that will tout and, and feature the cutting edge of clinical medicine as it's practiced in 2009, and, and also a series of superb both basic and clinical science symposia developed by our, by our program committee. So as always, there are going to be more things that, that people want to go to than they're going to physically be able to, but no matter what they attend, uh, I think they can be assured that there are going to be outstanding speakers and sparkling and exciting topics in, in areas of clinical medicine and basic and clinical research related to nephrology and the kidney. And it's in San Diego, which is a lovely place, uh, and uh, get some sun and sea maybe at the same time. You can't go wrong with San Diego. That's what I'm saying. The end of Renal Week is when you officially hand over the presidency. Can you describe what the transition process is? So the transition from current to past president, or the transition from counselor to president, or all of the above? Or... Oh, a little bit about all of the above. Our terms are structured so that we've, we're on council forever before we actually become presidents, but it's five years that you spend uh, as a counselor really gives you time to learn about the organization and all its various activities, and your sort of work and responsibility tends to accelerate as you move forward so that the president-elect year is, is kind of a dry run where you, where you really start taking more responsibility and have more involvement in, in working through the society so that you're, you're ready to go uh, for your president's year, which is, is very busy. I mean, it's, i got to say it's been, a, it's been a really fun, uh, interesting, but really busy year. And I will look forward to the, to the meeting, which is going to be great, and to the last day when I will hand off the responsibilities to uh, the first woman to be president of our society, which is, is, is exciting, and, and to somebody I know is, is going to do an outstanding job, Sharon Anderson. And, and then I get to sort of drift off into the sunset as the past president, and I hope my number of emails is going to decrease logarithmically uh, starting that day. Okay, so Sharon Anderson is the president-elect, and I understand, Dr. Anderson, that you earned a rather non-traditional pre-medical degree. Yeah, I got a, a degree from the University of Maryland in government and politics, and I won't uh, tell you what my career aspirations were then. They did not involve medical school, but it's turned out that having that background has been very useful as I've tried to wind my way through academic politics. Some knowledge of Byzantine structures has been helpful. And it's good for leading a large organization like the ASN as well. You're currently a professor as well as vice chair for VA affairs in the Department of Medicine at Oregon Health and Science University, as well as chief of the medical service at the Portland VA Medical Center. What prior ASN activities have you participated in? Well, I think I started like most people as a fellow. I attended my first uh, ASN meeting as a fellow and had a poster presentation, I believe. So in addition to submitting my own work, I a few years later started reviewing abstracts, which I think is how a lot of our junior people start getting involved with society, eventually uh, chairing sessions, and then later serving on various committees. Um, I've been on a number of them, including past service on the program committee and I was on the training program director's committee as well before actually coming on the council. So how have you prepared for the presidency? Well, as Tom said, there is a very long apprenticeship, and I will say that in the beginning I thought, you know, why do I need to be on the council for five years before I finally get to be president? But in retrospect, I think it's been extremely valuable. It's a very 
complex organization, and the organization has really been changing to meet the needs of its very complex membership. There's a lot of aspects to nephrology, what nephrologists do, what the government has to say about what nephrologists do, etc. So there are many, many aspects that uh, the society has been trying to stay on top of and get engaged with, and it really does take a lot of time for those of us who do have a full-time day job to really be able to come up to speed. So I've been extremely grateful for my years on the council and for the wisdom and guidance of the uh, counselors who have come before me. So what do you hope to accomplish during your term as president? Well, I hope the ASN can continue to uh, serve the needs of its membership in all the ways that it currently does and and perhaps even ways we haven't thought of. The mission is really multiple. Obviously, our primary traditional mission has been education to put on the absolute very best scientific meeting, and I expect we will continue to do that. I'm very pleased that Dr. David Ellison has taken on the task of being the chair of the 2010 program committee. He's put together a terrific group, and I'm sure uh, we're going to have a great program. So we need to continue to pay attention to the educational needs, not only just putting on the, the good program. In recent years, as you know, we've expanded adding the board review course, adding a mix up, etc. And one of the challenges has been converting our products to more modern ways of delivery. Um, The podcasts, I think, have been a great addition. I think that uh, many members will um, recognize that the ASN website in general has become more useful, but we really would like to continue to innovate and develop new ways to deliver these educational products to all of our members. One aspect of that is assisting our members with the maintenance of certification or board recertification process. This is something that is being required of more and more of our younger members, and it won't be that long before it's required of all of our members, and I think the society has done a great job with making NEFSAP available, serving as part of the requirements for uh, recertification, but there are a lot more things we can do, and the big challenge many, to many of our uh, younger members is part four, the practice improvement. Piece. So the ASN is currently engaging with the ABIM in developing practice improvement pieces that are more applicable to what nephrologists do. That's just one example. I think that, as Tom said, we have a number of public policy issues that have been and will continue to be important for the society to pay attention to all of the areas of reimbursement, legislation, uh, government, looking at how we take care of our patients. All of those issues are really going to need to remain front and center. And I think attention to quality and safety is an area that the ASN has perhaps potential to take more of a lead in. So there's plenty of stuff to do on many different fronts. We certainly do like to hear from our membership, and if there are other areas that the uh, membership feels the ASN should be paying more attention to or spending more time on, we'd certainly like to hear this. So, Dr. Kaufman, do you have any advice for the incoming president? Well, I I think Sharon's ready to go. I think an important part of this is is just planning your time because it's it's, it's, – there's this deluge that starts about January or so, but but I think she's she's well prepared, and and I'm certainly here to help give her any advice uh, if she needs it during the next year. That's very much appreciated. I feel like the deluge has already started, so thanks. <laughs> just wait, just wait. <laughs> what advice do you have for members who wish to become engaged uh, with ASN, uh, Dr. Kaufman? Why don't you go first? Just speak up and get involved. We talk a lot about and we recognize that a major strength of of this organization is the broad and diverse and interesting membership that we have. And there are lots of potential opportunities to get involved in advisory groups and in educational activities and speak up and let us know, you know, what's on your mind and what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong and things that you'd like to do. I think as we expand our ability to do electronic communication, the ability to provide input will be expanded. And so, yeah, so just speak up and let us hear from you. Anything to add, Dr. Anderson? I would second everything Tom said. We have some tremendous committees and advisory groups that exist just for that purpose, to provide advice and counsel to the council 
uh, with respect to uh, issues that are important for the for the ASN, and it works, I think, very well because we have such a broad diversity of interests and skills and expertise, and it's it's really wonderful for us to be able to call on a a group of people who really know their stuff when an issue comes up that's related to dialysis or hypertension or transplant or or anything else. So I would encourage the membership to watch for the periodic calls that come out from the ASN asking for volunteers for committees and advisory groups. And if you don't get selected the first year you stick your name in, please uh, put your name in again the next year because there's constant turnover of the terms, and feel free to provide input or advice or questions to any of us, to any of us on the council, to the staff, to the members of the advisory groups, because we really do want to continue to be advocates for our membership and all the areas of our professional lives. So definitely let us hear from you. ASN Kidney News is a publication of the American Society of Nephrology. The ideas and opinions expressed by participants in ASN Kidney News podcasts are their own and do not necessarily reflect the positions of the society. To lead the fight against kidney disease, ASN helps its 11,000 members provide high-quality care to patients, conduct cutting-edge research, and educate the next generations of kidney care professionals. To learn more about ASN or Kidney News, please visit the Society's website at asn-online.org. Thank you for listening to this podcast of the American Society of Nephrology.